it's happening. And that's enough to shout about. We ought to jump up and down and clap our hands and just scream to the glory of God. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. I've lived to see this day. It's happening. Thank you, Brother Lewis. Thank you, Brother Lewis. Didn't you feel that burden, that desire, that fervency, that uh, importunity? And uh, what's all that other? I just feel it. I just want it. I just want more of it. But I'm glad to know it's happening. Let me just say that again. It's happening. It's happening. Folks, it's happening. Don't get left behind. Don't come behind in any gift. Oh, it's possible. It's available. Don't worry about the assaults because you're fixing to get knocked down. But you won't be knocked out. Get up and knock at him again. He doesn't like you to do what you're doing. He doesn't like this at all. He didn't want Sister Tenny to get here to us. And she is my boss. And I'm so glad she's here. She's got more sense than I've got. She's, she's been all over the world. She's a big shot and I'm a little shot. But a little shot just keeps on shooting till they become a big shot. And all of you little shots can just keep a shooting until you become big shots. But we're all shooting, folks. And that's the wonderful thing. But I'm going to tell you, we're so fortunate to have this lady here that's organized this uh, WNOP, World Network of Prayer, and it's circling the globe. It's undergirding everything that we've ever taught and believed. We don't have to go anywhere to find nothing. We've got the best We've got the best of everything. There's nobody, there's no organizer in the world like Thetis Tenney. And she's implemented it. And I want us to thank God that it's happening. Come on and let's just clap our hands and thank God that it's happening. It's happening, folks. you and you may be seated. Now the devil doesn't care if we talk about all of this or read about this prayer or teach about it. He doesn't even care if we preach on prayer. The great need of our churches and our world and our nation and our families and our own individual selves, we've got to learn how to pray and never stop until we say prevail. prevail, prevail. We've got to prevail. And if you haven't prevailed over yourself, over people, over situations and circumstances and the devil, and I'm gonna tell you that he does not, he does not loosen his clutches easily. And I wanna talk about some of that, but that's why Samuel said, God forbid that I would ever stop that I would ever cease praying for anybody that's in the clutches that's shackled by satanic forces. And they can't even exert their own will until we unshackle them with intercessory prayer. But today I want to talk about how to pray with authority. How to pray with authority. We've got to learn how to pray and prevail in prayer but we need to know how to pray with authority. And I want to, as best I can, give a clear definition of certain Bible terms of intercession so we can pray with greater clarity and with authority. Because all of us use these terms, but we do not even know. You've received a burden of prayer and a desire. And I feel that you've been motivated to pray. And yesterday and last night was explosive. But I think sometimes that we don't stop long enough to learn how to use all of these clubs that we've got to knock the ball just a little further and what we need to use. So 
When a believer walks into our services or a new convert comes, here's our pastor or Bible study group leader say, a serious stronghold is coming against our church and our families and certain individuals. There's a yoke that's strangling this church. Have you ever heard all of this? Okay. Or uh, let's pray about in the power of agreement and loose the will of God and intercede until we've prayed through this thing. Now, if people don't understand the language that we're using. They don't know what a yoke is. They don't know what agreement in prayer is. They do not know what it means to prevail. What makes us think that they can be an intercessor, even with a burden, with a desire. It's like newcomers in Alexandria are coming in and saying, I want to get in a prayer group because I want to learn how to break a yoke. I want to learn how to agree with somebody in prayer. I want to learn this prevailing prayer. I've heard you all talk about it. But I don't want to just go to the prayer room. I want to use these clubs. And so when they don't understand prayer of agreement or breaking the yoke or pulling down strongholds, so a better understanding of these terms we use in prayer will help every one of us intercede with greater clarity and authority. Having a better understanding of a few basic terms should help us use the language, say the language, the language of intercession to resist satanic powers. They don't know how to do that. And see God's purposes accomplished everywhere, in our families, in our church, in human affairs, and throughout this world. So let's talk just a minute about strongholds. And I talked about it yesterday. But to these, uh, uh, this challenges me, doesn't it, you, Sister Tenney? This school over here challenges me because they are studying and we are about to launch them. And they they, they, they have a good launching pad. And we want to be behind them in every way. But they will have to understand that there will be strongholds. And you say, we're familiar with that, but everybody here isn't familiar with that. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 10 and 4, you know it well, and he wrote this after he'd been to Ephesus, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down what? So if they don't know how to do that, strongholds are fortified places Satan builds to exalt himself against the knowledge and the plan of God. There are strongholds in us that we're not even aware of. One definition says, and I gave you one yesterday, a stronghold is a mindset impregnated with hopelessness that causes us to accept as unchangeable something that we know is contrary to the will of God. In a book that I've just read, Overcoming the Dominion of Darkness, uh, this particular man, Gary Kinnaman's book, he identifies three types of strongholds. I'm not going to deal with them. I'm just going to mention them because I want to hasten on. Personal strongholds. He says these are evil and sinful things that Satan builds to influence a person's thoughts, attitudes, and behavior patterns. And folks, don't think that you're not guilty. Anything that's lodging in your mind that's playing with your emotions and that's creating imaginations and building up things in your mind against people is a stronghold in your mind. And if you don't pull that down and if it festers up, the devil moves in there and takes good control. And we're familiar with that even in our ranks. And then people resist and they rebel and they think they'll go another direction. All it is is a stronghold that's got to be pulled down because something rose up and then they cracked the door and the little cat came back for more milk and he kept scratching at the screen and that's playing with your mind. I'm familiar with that, folks. I know all about that. I'm an authentic human being. Look at me. I'm an authentic human being and I am nobody come. And the devil doesn't like me and he'd love to plant thoughts and ideas in my mind. And we've got to get that out of us because we've got to get unified in our churches. And we'll never get unified as long as that stuff is in there. And it's like that man that broke down in the river bottom 
and he had a flat, and he was going to a farmer's house to borrow a tool to, to work with his car. He didn't have anything. And all the way there, he said, he's not going to want to give me that tool. He's going to tell me to, he's going to slam the door in my face and say, you see, things were building up in his mind. And he just kept letting that bill until when he got there and the man opened the door and said, can I help you, sir? He said, I don't want nothing you've got. You wouldn't give it to me if I were to ask you for it. Now, you think that's funny? That's happening to every one of us. Stuff building up in our minds, junk. It's strongholds. And if you allow that to stay there before you know it and that person crosses your path, I'm telling you until we pray like we even prayed a while ago. But we've got to move on in there and pull that out of our minds. If you ever get a good old baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire, when you're in that, you know, you love everybody. That's the love of God that we'll have to have to save this world and to win this world. Until you move in there and pull that out. Folks, we've just gone through the motion here a while ago. That's got to happen to us over and over and over and over and over and over and over, and over again. Say every day, every day, every day, every day, every day, every day. Every day. You've got to pull down those strongholds. We're sitting here right now with personal strongholds. I didn't intend to stay there that long, but I thought I should. Ideological strongholds. And this particular man says these concern Satan's dominance of the world view through philosophies that influence culture and society, what Brother Lewis is going to talk about in his next session. Humanism and, uh, and, and New Age and all of that that is subtly coming in. And, and, and body, n nothing wrong with taking care of your body, but I'm just saying we're into that age where Romans 1 is really coming into understanding even better because we're in a sick world, folks. We're in a very sick world. And we've got to guard every door and every window. But at the same time, even while we're doing that, we've got to reach out and somehow qualify ourselves to repel and then to bring in. And we've got to be somebody come. We can't do this, as he said, with little patty caking and with little lay me down to sleep. We've got to be warriors on our own front line. Right. You're hearing me? You've got to become a warrior, little lady, ma'am, sir. Whoever you are, I'm a little nobody. Oh, no, you're not. You can do everything I'm talking about. You just stay at it. And so uh, humanism and New Age religion and jo uh, Charles Darwin's theory of natural selection, it opposes biblical creation. You're facing all of that. I don't want to deal with that too much. But uh, these strongholds are portrayed in 2 Corinthians 10 and 5. Casting down, casting down, say, imaginations, arguments in high things. They exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. You better seek God and you better know this book, folks, and you better pray this book. Praying, not praying the Word is lifeless. The Word without prayer means nothing. You've got to have them both and put prayer and the Word together, which is the will of God, the mind of God. Hallelujah. The Spirit breathed Word of God. You can accomplish anything, pull down anything, do anything. So these territorial strongholds, we've got to... Uh, 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 that, that's, that's our next thing. We've got to bring every thought into captivity. Every thought. Say every thought. Every thought. I'm having a struggle with that. See, I'm going to be honest with you and very open today. I'm having a struggle to bring every thought into captivity and not in obedience to Christ, but to just gird up the loins of my mind. Are you there? Come on, folks, and be honest with yourselves. We need something where we fall on our knees to pull down these strongholds and to bring every thought into captivity and get rid of this junk that's invading our mind that seeks to get into our heart and into our spirit and change us into a person that we don't want to be. Now, let's talk about the territorial strongholds. And he says these represent the hierarchy of dark beings assigned by Satan to influence and control nations, communities, and even families. Certain demonic forces mass and go to different regions 
A couple told me yesterday when they drove into this city that they felt that spirit come against them, whatever it was in this city, and even they themselves became a little bit agitated with each other, and they had to get together and agree in prayer and pray together and repel that and, and remove that. Uh, I'm telling you, folks, you have no idea what you're up against. You're not up against a little serpent in the Garden of Eden. You're up against, you're up against a dragon, satanic forces that can't even have a name in the book of Revelation. We're just before the Revelation. We're just before all of that, and look what we're up against. So we, uh, to fortify particular types of evil, certain cities will be, say, strongholds, say, strongholds of idolatry, say sensual sin of certain kinds of, uh, of even religious spirits. And we could start naming cities, but every city has a prince over it, ruling it. Just think that in mind. Say a territorial prince, a territorial spirit. And until you come together as a church and bind the prince and the power of the air, there is no way to get through to the throne and somebody's got to fast and pray until that's broken. Hallelujah. Go ahead, Brother Smith. Is that you? Oh, I'm glad you're here. Just point that at me every once in a while. That'll give me strength. For instance, in the ancient city of Pergamos, uh, there was a territorial stronghold. And you know, and in Revelation 2 and 13, the city is described as where Satan's throne is, where Satan dwells. And according to Unger's Bible Dictionary, the city was greatly addicted to idolatry and its groves uh, were filled with statues and altars. Now, we know about pulling down strongholds. We've witnessed the effects of tearing down territorial strongholds, even in Alexandria. As I mentioned to you yesterday, and Sister Tenney will tell you this, the most politically influential man in the whole state of Louisiana, headquartered there in Alexandria. He belonged to the church that that was the church domicile when we went to Alexandria. They wouldn't even let us get on the radio. Brother Mangan had to write his sermons to even use a businessman's name. They had to audition my singing. This man controlled every governor that went into office. And so this man was absolutely unarmed and stripped and, and now his family is sitting on our pews, and he has gone on, and that just happened. But I'm telling you, his powers began to lessen and to lessen, and there was a hole knocked in the sky. Say, knocked. Just say, knocked. You've got to knock a hole in the sky. You've got to knock away that we can get something pulled down from another world into this little world. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Come against that territorial spirit in your area so we can knock a hole in the sky and get through to the throne and pull down his presence in every service. So that's been wonderful. Fasting and praying and a chain of prayer. And we begin all of this, say, with repentance. And I needed to repent this morning, folks, because of those imaginations and thoughts. And the devil will wake you up at night and show you the most horrible picture and ain't near that bad the next morning. That's the truth. That's exactly right. We're up against, we're up against some things, but the devil's kingdom, say, it cannot stand. It cannot stand. Say, it will not stand. We are fortifying ourselves and uniting ourselves, and the devil might as well pack up his bags and move out. Pack up your bags and move out of our city. Pack up your bags and move out of our church. Please excuse me. Pack up your bags. Now that looks like I'm a big shot, doesn't it? When I could pull off my coat and just throw it. But I'm excited, folks. I'm so excited about what's happening. I've lived to see this day. I may not live to see the finish, but we've just begun. We've just begun. Hey, devil, look out. Look out. He's going to hit every one of you. Are you ready for that? Are you going to back up or turn around and go back? Say, no, I may be knocked down, but he ain't going to knock me out. Hallelujah. He got, he, he, he let God, God let him get to Job for, say, sickness, health, wealth, children and all. But wait, there's coming a last chapter. Hang in here with us. Wait till you see the last act. 
Hallelujah. Say, it's beginning. But say, this is just the beginning. Say, you ain't seen nothing yet. Come on, shake your head. Say, devil, you ain't seen nothing yet. Sister Tinney's father in West Monroe had the statesmen's there to, he had a big revival meeting and he wanted to do everything to, to get people there. So um, uh, he had this, the, the statesmen's, I don't, really, I don't guess he had them, but they were out there in a big uh, uh, arena or ball field, that's where it was. And, and uh, Hovey Lister was playing for the uh, statesmen's and there must have been 10,000 or 15,000 people there, and he was just playing away, and when he got through, everybody just stood, and it was a standing ovation two or three times. So when they got quiet, he sat down and just ripped across there, and he said, you ain't seen nothing yet. You ought to just look at the devil today and say, I'm going to learn how to pull down strongholds, and I'm going to start with myself. I'm going to start with the ideological strongholds. I'm going to pull down strongholds, territorial strongholds. And I'm going to move in on this thing and I'm going to be a prayer warrior like I've never been. I intend to see some results. I'm going to knock a hole in the sky and look at the devil and say, you ain't seen nothing yet. When those strongholds are pulled down, the devil cannot stand. Satan, your kingdom is coming down. Say it again. Strongholds in my mind, you're moving out. Territorial spirits over my city. We're going to knock a hole in the sky. You're taking my time. Let Sister Tenney tell you about when that wall went down in Germany. She can tell you a whole lot of stuff. I, I, mean, I don't mean this is surface stuff, but I'm going to tell you something, folks. I know... I know what's happened in my life. I know. And I know this, that I'm not good enough at my trade yet. But you look at me. If God gives me ten more years, these will be my best years. He has somehow imprisoned me now and shackled me. I told him I'll write my best sermons. I'll sing my best songs. I'll pray my best prayers. You've moved in on me. I'm going to move you out. <laughs> Devil, you ain't seen nothing yet. If you put me in bed, I'll wiggle my fingers. I'll do something to let him know I'm still against you. I'm coming against you. Hallelujah! Why don't you minister shout, Hallelujah! You may be seated. Repent. Say repent. 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 Just keep that in mind. I don't have to go into all of that with you and give you a, a, an explanation of that. That means just get down to business with God. Get that junk out of you. Turn from it. And every time it hits your mind, just repent again and say, I'm sorry. I ain't no good. No, none of us is no good. Come on. You don't look at somebody and say, no, they have to fight the flesh just like you do. None of us good. No, not one. Just sorry. I just hate to bust your balloon, but that's just the way it is. And I'm about as authentic as they come. Just, 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 just know this. I wouldn't be a prayer warrior if I didn't know I needed God. I need Him for myself. I need Him for my situations. I need Him for my family. I need to help with that church. That's the greatest thing on planet Earth. But know this. When a strong man fully armed, say fully armed. I wish I had time to tell you about a little boy that watched people come and go from a place where there was no rusty God sitting there with a big stomach and all. He just saw them come there and give everything they could. I could go into all of that and take all day. But he saw them come there, give everything they got and leave with such joy that they'd done something. And here we come say, our God, behold, our God is alive. And we come to church like little toy soldiers. We pray like little toy soldiers. And we're not coming to a doctor or a psychiatrist or an earthly. We're coming to the almighty live God that came out of the tomb. 
I'm not marching around no little rusty, ugly, big stomachs. God, I'm, I'm praying to a real living God that has all power in heaven and in earth. Come on, folks, wake up back there. Some of you still got your hands folded. You're not a good Pentecostal with folded hands. You may be seated. I told you that my bark was bigger than my bite. But I'm going to tell you this is one thing, and she can tell you the only area that I move in comfortably is in the spirit. I, I'm a clinging vine in every, every other area of my life. But when I get into this, folks, I get bold. <sighs> get out of my way. I growl at the devil. I laugh him off of the stage. I cry him out. I talk in tongues him out. I use every club I got. I put on all the boxing gloves I can put on. I put all on the armor that I can put on, and I say, buddy, you just come on because I'm gonna lick, I'm gonna hit you harder than you ever hit me. Oh, somebody ought to holler! I get the message. Say he's guarding my boy. Say he's guarding him. Come on, talk with me. Say he's guarding my girl. Say, he's guarding my family. And say, he's fully armed. He's guarding that palace. He's keeping his goods in peace. But say, but, but, there's another line. There's another chapter that's going to be written. There's another chapter that's going to be written. Just say, but, say this with me, when they're stronger, that's the superlative. When the stronger than he comes upon him and overcomes him. Come on, Jesus, you're my winner. You're my God. You're my winner. Come on, mama, bahaya, rarori, ayaya, lahasha, talahaya. Come on, I'm, I, I'm depending on you, Jesus. You're my everything, Lord. Don't let me down now. All of Calvary's benefits, I'm coming for every bit of it. I'm coming for everything you purchased for me. get through. I'm sorry for the rest of you speakers. I'll never get through. <laughs> oh, we got to hear this Theta Stenny all day long. She's, I mean, I don't mean that she's not inspirational. She challenges me, but I'm going to tell you, she's going to tell us how. Now, I, I don't want to, ju I don't want to just leave there, but I want to say this, that he takes, yeah. say my Jesus. my Jesus, Jesus is my Lord. Say, he's Lord of heaven and hell and all of nature. Say, he's Lord anyhow. He's Lord whether you bow to him or whether he's Lord. Say, he's in control. See, I could preach all day there, couldn't I? Say, he's Lord. That's how, young men, you just get to preaching that. He's Lord. Just take it over there. Well, you can't keep us all night, but you can tell us. He takes from him all, say all, all, not just a little bit. He takes from him all his armor in which that old booger trusted, and he divides his spoils. Mm, I, I'm up here. I may have said a bad word. I don't know. Just excuse Texas, Louisiana. But now let's talk about praying in agreement. And this is powerful. It's very powerful. If Jesus said it, I believe it. If two of you agree on earth. Now, this is what you've got to teach young converts and say, I need to know again. And, and uh, please forgive me. Please forgive me. But this precious, precious, precious uh, 
girl was reared in Pentecost. She told me yesterday, she said, Sister Mangan, a light turned on in my head about the different diverse tongues that you talked about. All I'm telling you that no matter what you know about agreement, listen to me closely. If just two of you agree, how about a man and a wife quit acting like you're acting toward each other? Minister, you and your wife, get together and agree. Say agree. agree. United prayer is the most powerful thing on this earth. United. Two of you agree on earth concerning, say anything. Say anything. Come on, say anything so it'll get in your mind. Say anything. Come on. Anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Now, is that awesome? Now, the Greek word translated agree in Matthew 18 19 means to be harmonious or to symphonize. A symphony then can help illustrate what it means to agree in prayer. Uh, harmonize, symphonize. And when a symphony plays, say many instruments perform. Everybody in the church, each adding its own quality to blend, heard by the composer. Doesn't matter where I am in this place, I'm a part of the symphony. And he's orchestrating it, but I'm a part of it. And I'm harmonizing with my pastor. I'm in agreement with my pastor. I'm in agreement with the people of our church. You say, I don't agree with everything they're doing, but there's some level that you can agree with them on. Okay? So we can have a united front. So God uses many types of prayers and intercessors to orchestrate His divine melody of prayer. Say, praying in agreement is linked like this. Filling a bottle with water. Get this. Say, one person may pour in 20%, another 30%, and another one 10%, and so on, say, until the bottle gets full. i got to have a full bottle. I got to have a full bottle that he talks about in Revelation. Those vials, they got to be full. I got to fill them up. Say, that takes every day. That takes more than one. I want to get with people that's got all these strongholds pulled down. I want to get with people that's repented. I want to get with people that's agreeing with what I'm agreeing about and focusing on what I'm focusing about. I want to get them to help me fill my bottle up. Hallelujah! To release my situation, my circumstance. I believe it. Somebody ought to shout, I want to believe it. Say, I want to give it a try. I'm going to get somebody that maybe can put in 10%. We want most of them to put in 80% and we put in 10%. So when the bottle is filled to the brim, agreement is complete and the task is finished. Though some people may feel their prayers don't amount to too much, those prayers may be the last drops needed to fill in the bottle. How many of you are hearing me? I'll get anybody I can that I feel that will just unshackle themselves and unfetter themselves and pour out themselves and give themselves and, and join hands with me and agree with me. And not just a little old passive prayer, but somebody that knows how to storm the gates of hell and agree with me. I've got to bring him back. I've got to get him out. I've got to call him out of the grave. So I've got to weep. I've got to groan. I've got to sigh. But then when I stand there with a loud voice and say, come forth, say, they're coming. They're coming. I don't know how, but they're coming. They may be a war casualty, but they're coming. Say, they're coming. How many of you mothers believe that with me? I've got to have help with some of my situations. How many of you agree with that? Clap your hands and say, I'm going to try that. I'm going to have a prayer group in my church, not a gossiping group. Those days are over, folks. It's too late to be gossiping. It's too late for any of that. Say, I've got to get to agreeing with everybody. I've got to do some things. Oh, so how many people does it take until a certain need is met? Let me ask you, what kind of stronghold are you up against? The stronger the resistance or higher the territorial power, the more people will be required to break the stronghold. Did you hear me? Say the more prayer. Say more prayer. Say more prayer. What level of authority does the person you have praying with you in the spirit? This is what the devil said. Paul, I know. Say, Paul, I know. And Jesus, I know. But who are you? I want some Pauls praying with me. And they, there, there are some among us, folks, as far as prayer life. I want some of those that believe that they can live the life that Jesus lived in prayer. That's praying day and night. Praying without ceasing. Are you hearing me? Say fasting and praying. I believe if you get together and, and, uh, uh, and agree with people of that type, I believe that anything can happen. I believe that they'll really do it. Not just talk about it, but really do it. 
so uh, a certain authority comes forth when an intercessor believes wholeheartedly that God will move in response to his or her prayers. And God's enemies know they're in trouble when this authority rings out in a prayer meeting. The devil knows he's in trouble. Now, has fasting ever been coupled with your prayer? Fasting multiplies the effect of prayer. It undergirds it. It, it, it gives strength to prayer. And it will touch things that prayer alone will never affect. This I'm talking about, folks, is hard work. I told Sister Tenny when Brother Lewis was winding up, I said, that's hard on the flesh. That's very hard on the flesh. And people give up because the flesh resists all this that I'm talking about. You've got to make time to do this every day. Fasting multiplies the effects of our prayer. So you may ask, how do I go about agreeing in prayer with someone who comes to, be with, comes to me with a need? First of all, find out how they're praying. But then I want to tell you some biblical examples of agreement in prayer. When Moses faced the problems of disobedience, unbelieving Israel, say he and Aaron repeatedly agreed in prayer. Every pastor in here needs a prayer shield. Every pastor in here needs members in that church agreeing just for their pastor and his wife and his family. Because when they're blessed, you're blessed. When this is unfettered and blessed and you love them, it'll spread throughout your children and grandchildren. You're really praying prayers down on your own self when you pray prayers for this pulpit. Say, so when the Amalekites, say, so when the Amalekites attacked Israel at Rephidim, Moses, Aaron, and Hur climbed a hill, and Aaron and Hur upheld what? Come on, say it out loud. Say, in prayer. This is agreement in prayer. After the 17, Moses reported afterward, hands uh, were lifted up to the throne of the Lord. Did you ever hear that? That just jumped out at me. Say, hands were lifted up to the throne of the Lord in agreement. Hands were lifted up. So they were hands of Moses, but they were united with the hands of Aaron and Hur. Say, that was three people whose hands... And say, was the battle won? Say, easily. Easily. And when they got tired, they just lifted them up. Come on, folks, and let's get to agreeing together in our homes, in our churches. Oh, and I, 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 I want to name just a few more. How much time do I have? I've got to name all of these. Just really tell me. Ten minutes? Fifteen? Five? Twenty minutes? Twenty minutes. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. No. At Kadesh Barnea, when Israel wanted to turn back to Egypt, say Moses and Aaron, I just want you to get this, fell down on their faces in prayer before the Lord in Numbers 14 and 5. When God was about to destroy the whole community of Israel who had rallied with Korah in rebellion, get this, Moses and Aaron say again, again, say again, and again, and again, and again, and again fell down on their faces, 16 and 22, the next day, 45, uh, 45th verse, and when Israel grumbled from thirst in chapter 20 and 6, we see them again say on their faces, agreeing before God. It's over and over and over and over, folks. You don't just agree one time. Every time you come up against something in your church, you back off and say, I'm not touching that with a 10-foot pole yet. But I'm going to get me a crew that's repented, that's in touch with God. Not these on the periphery. Not these that's just using this church. Not these that's just a coming and a going and a loving. But you get them. I'm telling you that Brother Mangan has practiced this. And now, Brother Anthony, for years, just back up. Just don't fool with nothing. Just keep on preaching the good word. And don't let anybody out there, you don't aim at anybody of preaching. You just back up and preach the good word of the Lord. But you get you a few and you get them to bind together with you, you fall on your face. You agree with prayer and it wouldn't hurt you to go on a few days fast or spend the night at the church in prayer. Say, we've got the artillery. We've got the armor. We've got the weapons. Come on, folks, let's get somebody to agreeing with us. Say, that's what the Lord wanted out of those disciples, but he never could wake them up to do it. Are you hearing me? Please stay awake and agree with me tonight. 
He's awaking me up right now to agree with him. My intercessor is on the throne. He ever liveth to make intercession. He didn't have just one little session this morning. Say, he's been there 2,000 years. Say, he's still, he's my partner. When he and I agree together and I go to groaning in the spirit, that's agreement with him. His spirits are groaning through me. I'm just offering him a body through which he can groan and pray and utter. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Say Peter and John prayed that prayer of agreement in Samaria, Acts 8, 55 through 17. And many of the church did when Peter was in prison, chapter four, uh, 12. And the early church missionary movement of Paul and Barnabas was launched through such a prayer meeting, say, of agreement, a focused, a moving in on it. Anything, folks, say anything. Say everything. If any two of you say ask anything. In my name, believe it. You can have it. Say, Jesus said it. Say, wake me up. Say, hit me one more time. <laughs> like that old boy that got up to preach and he said, behold. You've heard that, haven't you? Behold, well, you busted my balloon. No, but you know that he said that, behold, he cometh. And he said it three times. He couldn't think of nothing else. And he hit that pulpit so hard till he fell over and hit all of them on the front seat. And he said, oh, I'm sorry. They said, no, no problem. You warned us three times. Here's a coming. <laughs> Don't you worry. Paul was praying. Paul was praying that. Let me just tell you, every big revival... Every revival has begun. I don't care if it was the revival in London. I don't care if it was the Wesley revival. Every one of their journals that I've ever read, it all was a time of prayer agreement. Say prayer agreement. 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 And I've got to get out of here. And, and, all, and oh, there's so many more of those that I'd like to tell you. But you've got to just plug in. And uh, let this all take a hold of you because the Holy Ghost has given you any scripture verse concerning your need and what you've got to do is to stay there until you bring that promise into being and get as many powerful prayer warriors that the devil even knows. Now, get in unity, but if you and the other person are in agreement, and you're praying together something like this. Lord, I agree with my friend, relative, etc. What they've asked for, your word declares if two of you agree on earth after that you have really plugged in. Now, according to your word, say according to your word. Say according to your word. According to your word. Just keep saying that. And he's not willing that any should perish. And he wants every life fully fulfilled according to his will that he planned for them before the foundation of the world. He was the lamb slain for me before the foundation of the world. And in that body was healing for my body. In that lamb that was slain was my salvation and was the will of God for my life. And he suffered the will of God for his life in Hebrews 5. When with strong crying and tears he made supplication. I want the will of God to be done in my life. I want to finish my course, and I want to leave here on that night saying, I fulfilled all that you gave me to do. So it's the will of God for me to pray that for everybody's life. Say the will of God. And I agree with them according to your word. And I thank you that you've answered my prayer. You get up from there and say that. Say and do that every day. I'm watching it. Now, I haven't covered all of them, but you just hang on here. I'll run fast now. Now, now we're coming to binding and loosing. Loosing. I, I, I can't stay. Whatever you bind on earth shall be loosed, shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Now, the old Jewish rabbis, binding and loosing meant simply, say, simply prohibiting and permitting. Say, that is establishing. Come on, say that with me. Say, binding and loosing binding. means prohibiting and permitting, that is, establishing. But binding...
refers to supernatural control. Now get this. In Luke 13, 13 through 16, Jesus uses this same root word to explain his healing of a woman afflicted by Satan. Ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound? Are you hearing me? Being a daughter of Vestamangan, whom Satan has bound for 18 years? Be loosed from this bond. Be loosed from this. Be loosed from this. Be loosed. Stay loosed. It's loosed in heaven. Loose it. Oh, I wish you I wish you'd hear that. You know what Jesus is showing those Jewish leaders that binding and loosing has a supernatural side. We're a supernatural people. I can't do this in the flesh. This is a supernatural. Jesus said specifically that it was Satan who had bound this woman. Jesus told the disciples, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth, I believe he was giving authority in heavenly places, the unseen realm where all things on earth can be bound or loosed. Loosed, say disallowed or allowed. Say I'll allow it or I'll disallow it. I don't want that enemy binding none of mine. I want them released. I don't care how long he's had them. Come on and clap your hands and say, I see what you're talking about. Say, ask, and you shall receive. Say, have faith in God. Say, be steadfast in faith. Say, war in the Spirit. Spiritual laws of binding and loosing. Binding and loosing is enforcing the laws of the kingdom of God. And let me just tell you this. Things bound in heaven include, say, fear. Say, guilt. Say, depression. Say, sickness. Say, sin. Say, demons. Say, that's bound in heaven. And I'm going to agree with him that I'm going to bind it on earth. Fear, guilt, depression, sickness, sin, demons, and things loosed in heaven include, say, salvation, healing, peace, deliverance, and even prosperity. Pray about your finances. It doesn't hurt. God wants you to prosper and be in health. Said he did. It don't hurt nothing. Ask it. I pray that God moves in this area and lets rich people turn their pocketbooks wrong side out so we can send the gospel all over the world. Come on, folks, you can do that. Get your agreeing. Say, don't think little, think big. Say, it all belongs to the God of heaven. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills and all the gold in there. Hallelujah. And so, by faith, and I have a right as a believer to ask those things. And uh, I believe he was giving authority to me in heavenly places. Negative binding, for instance, now get this, say negative binding. In rodeos, cowboys compete in activities such say, as roping and bronco busting. The event that best depicts binding is the calf roping and tying down. Now get this, a cowboy chases and ropes a calf from his horse, pulls it to the ground and ties the calf's legs together so it cannot move. This done, the cowboy throws up his hands in a gesture of victory. This is the picture of what happens in the spiritual realm. When we pray to tie or bind Satan from having anything to do with a given situation, as intercessors, we become aware of a certain situation in which Satan is trying to cause problems, and we go into serious, effectual, fervent, diligent, uh, unified prayer, and we use the illustration of the cowboy. We take our rope, which is the Word of God, and we ride the vehicle of prayer out to stop the works of Satan. Then we release our rope by speaking the word of God. Satan, I bind you. I tie you up in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And whatever I bind on earth that is bound in heaven, whatever I loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Say, in the name of Jesus. Say, in the name of Jesus. I forbid you to cause any more trouble or any more strife. Say, I got you tied down and I've got you roped. Some situations require more than one person to do this binding and roping. And the weapon of binding needs to be coupled with the prayer of agreement. Each person who prays throws a rope until the prayers completely bind the attack of Satan. Because distance doesn't even exist in the realm of the Spirit. This weapon of binding, I can agree with you, even up here in Canada. You and I can tie him down and throw our rope and bind him to the ground. Hey, folks, say, we're, we're, we're somebody come. 
so we don't have to be now positive by any I can't stay there long I've got to get out of here so now loosing loosing in prayer releases or permits God's will to enter and change a situation a loosing prayer can have the following effects and I'm out it can bring about the release of a captive it can release a person from sickness or disease, as in the case of the woman whom Satan had bound with an infirmity. It can loose or declare the will of God to be done in a certain situation. It can loose God to move in and change situations. One quick thing on breaking a yoke. Say, the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing, Isaiah 10 and 27. In biblical times, a pair of oxen were joined together at the neck by a wooden frame called a yoke. A strong or uh, lead ox would take the larger side and the younger, weaker ox the opposite side. Isn't this beautiful? And they pulled and the weaker ox had to keep in step with the stronger ox. So when we are in yoke with Jesus Christ, say, my burden is easy and my burden is light. Say, but he's, he's the stronger one. Matthew 11, say, he's pulling the weight. But say, Satan has counterfeited this principle to put heavy yokes on people. To bring them in bondage to thoughts and occultic oppressions and wrong relationships. But the Bible tells me that I'm not to be unequally yoked together with anybody, thing, anything. And I don't have any fellowship with uh, uh, unrighteousness and lawlessness. And, and what accord do I have with people that won't believe with me and pray with me? Hey, folks, just keep on doing your thing. So I'm going to pray this way. Say, the anointing of the Holy Ghost is mighty upon me, and the Spirit's going to move through me in intercession, and I'm going to tear apart the yokes of Satan. Hallelujah! Oh, oh and I, I could go into the fast that uh, Isaiah said, is this not the fast that I've chosen? The bind the power of the evil one, pray for the power of the evil one to be broken, and then you stand upon your feet, and you just begin praising the Lord according to Psalm 146. When you get through doing all of that, you walk out your door just praising the Lord. I'm telling you, say it works. Hallelujah, it works. Now, standing in the gap, and I don't have time to go into that, but you know a little bit of something about standing in the gap, don't you? Say, God said, if I just have one who would stand in the gap, I wouldn't do what I was going to do to that individual or that city or that nation. It's a holy war for the souls of men and women. We're wrestling in heavenly places. I don't know what we'd have in Alexandria. 49,000 people or 50,000, she can tell you. 49, I don't know what would happen if there were not a group of people there every day, every day. Prayer groups, they've got their own prayer groups. They're not there to gossip. If they are, honey, we'll just blow up their little party by just praying and fasting. I'm telling you, you don't want to gather together for that. They're gathering together to help us bind the forces of evil and snatch souls out of hell. They're coming in off of the streets. Where can I find this? Where is this? Something's calling me. Something's waking me up at night. Prisons, jails, wherever. There they sit on the front row, delivered, saved. Judges come, see them. They're amazed. They weep. They cry. What did it? Somebody stood in the gap and said, I'm not giving up. You're not going to get to them till you wipe me out. Say, I'm going to stand in the gap for my children. My family, my loved ones, my church, my city, and pray that God will not say to this generation that he sought for somebody who would stand in the gap, but say he found none. Say it's happening, and it's going to happen in every city, and say I'm going to help make it happen. Say I'm a part of this, and I want us now to stand and just clap our hands and rejoice. I want us to stand and praise the Lord. I want us to stand and say, I'm, I, I'm going to enter into this. Say, so we're going to do it. Say, so we're going to do it. Say, so it's happening. Bible school, say, so we're going to do it. We're going to do it. Say, so we're going to do it. Look out, devil, look out. Holler it again. Satan, your kingdom's coming down. Hallelujah. Satan, your kingdom's coming down. We're pulling down every stronghold. We're agreeing together. We're binding and then we're loosing. All that's bound and loose in heaven, I want every bit of it. All the benefits of Calvary. Hallelujah. Clap your hands one more time.
Praise God. Amen.